Todd, why don't you do another top 10 list? Hey, you should do another top 10 list. Do another top 10 list. Fine. Fine. <sighs> Pick here. You know these things are like a ton of work, right? Like I have to do like tons of research and editing and you don't want to hear it. Yes. Anyway. Y'all ready for this? Well, I'm not. Everybody dance now. 1991 is a strange, strange year for the pop charts. Not necessarily a bad year, but more like an aborted experiment. Historians call the 20th century the short century because every important trend in it seemed to end abruptly with the end of the Cold War in this particular year, 1991. And that's the way this pop chart feels. It's a premature ending instead of a beginning. Except for a few future heavyweights like Boys to Man and R.E.M., the pop charts of 1991 are littered by artists with no future, be they novelties from short-lived genres, the remaining dregs of hair metal, the soon-to-be eradicated plague of adult contemporary, and a surprisingly large number of no-name Paul Abdul wannabes. 90% of this 1991 list will be has-beens by 92. And so, let us examine this year in music that time forgot. We're counting down! The top 10 worst hit songs of 1991. Number 10. Girl, I must warn you. Never trust a big button, smile, that girl is poison. Well, pretty much every trend of the early 90s now seems horribly dated. The hip hop influenced R&B genre called New Jack Swing now seems wonderfully dated. This is retro in the best way, and I don't know why it hasn't made a comeback yet, but I'm sure it will. The tunes are slamming, the bass is jamming, not too hot, not too cold. Really, who doesn't like this stuff? So let me say that I really, really struggled with putting a song with one of those classic early 90s grooves under it. I don't want something like that to be on this list, but there was this one song that that I just couldn't get past for, uh, for some reason, and... Uh, I'll see if you can see the problem. Why am I watching a group of dancing fetuses? In 1990, Michael Bibbins from New Edition put his clout behind a new singing group that he discovered in a maternity ward somewhere. He named them Another Bad Creation, which is truth in advertising if I ever heard it. They were clearly trying to make people think they were the new Jackson 5, especially as they picked a name with the initials ABC. But even if they genuinely had discovered a Michael Jackson level talent, which they didn't. Auto-tune can't come quickly enough. But even if they were child prodigies so amazing that they made Michael Jackson look like David after dentist, the Jackson 5 made Sonny bubblegum pop, not this style of music. Which does not really lend itself to being performed by preschoolers. I know Michael Jackson was a little kid and you knew he was a little kid, but he didn't call attention to it. Neither did most others. Didn't New Edition didn't, the Osmonds didn't. But babies kids here want you to know their age. Kid, you're not interested in girls. I know you're not interested in girls. You haven't even finished teething. I want to say here I'm not opposed to pop songs by little kids on principle. I still think Criss Cross are the Miggity Miggity Mac Daddies. And for the record, people forget that this very song is a diss track to Another Bad Creation. Exactly. Another bad creation were wiggity wiggity whack. They were a stupid little fad. Not like crisscross. They're gonna be around forever. And like I said, otherwise the tune is good, but 
It's also a ripoff of Poison. I don't need a Rugrats rewrite of Poison. Nowadays we just cut out the middleman and have the kids cover the songs directly. And really, aren't we all better off for it? Number 9. Oh boy. You again. Rico. Suave. Gerardo did for Latinos what Long Duck Dong did for Asians. Matter of fact, I would argue that Speedy Gonzalez was a hotter sex symbol than Gerardo. Oh seriously, Speedy was a pimp. We actually saw him get with the ladies. He didn't have to brag about anything. This guy. Would you rather have me lie, take a piece of your pie, and say bye, or be honest and rub your thighs? Gerardo claims that ladies love him, but the only moves he seems to know is rubbing your thighs and puking. And if I try that, I'll be puking. Smooth as butter. That butter had gravel and broken glass mixed into it. I never said I was a prime thing. Yeah, Gerardo should have picked up some moves from Speedy. The only thing he seemed to learn from him was how to speak in the exact same tone of voice. There's not a woman that can handle a man like me, that's why I juggle two or three. I yeah, it's hard to sell that you're a sexy lover man when your voice is comparable to a cartoon mouse. I already did a full episode on this weasel-faced idiot. You can go watch that if you want a full review, but uh, there is one thing that I missed that I want to bring up. Uh, he's not actually Latino. His name is Gregory Michaels and he was born and raised in Erie, Pennsylvania. I mean, you think that any real Latino would be caught representing his people by dressing and acting like that? <laughs> right. Next you'll tell me you think the Indian chief from the village people was a real Indian. <laughs> Quit being so naive. Suave. Number 8. Oh, I'm about to do a bad thing. Bad, bad thing. I believe the children are our future. It's um, generally considered bad taste to speak ill of the dead, especially someone whose life story is basically just very sad and tragic and is still being mourned by so very many people. Feels a little like sacrilege to suggest that even during her peak years Whitney Houston was squandering her talents on terrible middle of the road schlock, even though that was the prevailing wisdom for years. Look, she did make a lot of good music. A lot of fun dance pop, a lot of very powerful love songs, she was quite talented. But she had limits. <laughs> this was a huge hit at the time. I don't know if it's still considered in the higher echelon of Whitney songs. I don't think so, but that might be because I hate it so much. Whatever you want from me. This isn't a laughably stupid song like Rico Suave, so you're, you're gonna have to wait until I, I, I try and articulate why I don't like it so much. Uh, look, from what I understand, I'm Your Baby Tonight was Whitney trying to regain some R&B cred after becoming mostly known for soft ballads. And, uh, it does not work. It does not work at all. Whitney Houston was Whitney Houston, not Janet Jackson. When you think Whitney Houston, you think sheer, raw power. And I... But this... Whatever, you whatever. It's a waste of Whitney. Whitney was so good at ballads because they gave her space to breathe. This doesn't, it's just that farting synthesizer blaring over everything. And Whitney Houston just was not loose enough to do something with this. Michael Jackson could rise above it, and Aretha or Tina, they had that edge to their voices that they could make themselves known. Whitney, Whitney is still just perfect little Whitney. I buy this as much as Celine Dion trying to cover Anaconda. She's just too nice and too clean and too innocent to pull it off. No one buys sexy bad girl Whitney. Yes, I know all of these criticisms sound hilarious in hindsight, because we all know what happened to her. Eventually, she did get her bad girl cred, in the worst way possible. Look, apparently behind the scenes, she may have been Amy Winehouse, but on record, she was Debbie Boone. This was terrible at the time, it's terrible now. <sighs> Such a waste, I can't even talk about this anymore. Number 7. 
Number seven. I don't know if this is controversial or what, but I think UB40 are just an atrocity of a band. What Michael Bolton did for R&B, UB40 did for reggae. And what Michael Bolton did for R&B, UB40 also did for R&B, because UB40 just loved ruining classic oldies. And for the worst example, I give you this. You gotta smile so bright. You know you could've been a kind of. If it were up to me, it wouldn't be Vanilla Ice who is the standard bearer for white people ruining black music. It would be these guys. Yeah, they had quite a few black numbers. You get my point. I think this may be my least favorite UB40 song ever, but I don't think it's especially noteworthy in their catalog. It sucks in exactly the same way as all other UB40 songs suck. I think the only major difference is how vast the gulf is between the original version and this one. You got a smile so bright. You know you could have been a candle. I'm holding you so the way you do the way you do. All day. As pretty as you are, you know you could have been a flower. Alright. I mean, you hear the difference, right? Isn't reggae supposed to be soulful, loose? I mean, they've got a full band there, I can see them. How do they sound so much like a hotel lounge singer performing with a drum machine? Magic is better than this. Snow made better reggae than this. Elton John made better reggae than this. More than anything, I think the blame for their eternal suckness is lead singer Ali Campbell, who has all the stage presence of wet phlegm. Baby, you're so smart, Every single song, the dude sounded like he was dying. And yet he seemed to believe that songs made famous by some of the greatest vocalists in history, Al Green, Dusty Springfield, Elvis Presley, would sound better if it was served by his dead, dead wine. Look, bottom line, most reggae is stuff you can get stoned to. UB40 is stuffed to fall asleep on a pool chair after eating too much lunch, too. Next. Number six. Look, making these top ten lists is hard, hard work, so I hope you'll forgive me if I take the lazy route and punch on an easy target for a little bit. Yo, Vanilla, kick it one time, boy. You knew it was coming. Play that not even remotely funky music, white boy. Play that funky music, vanilla ice. Pump it up. Vanilla Ice has spent two and a half decades as a walking punchline, so you kind of forget how genuinely famous and successful Vanilla Ice was in his prime. He wasn't a novelty, he was one of the biggest names in music. And this is amazing because even after you peel off the years of jokes and stupid hair and ninja raps, he was still incredibly bad. Just like the worst thing ever in the history of mankind. Vanilla Ice is worse than the Nazis. Oh, okay, that's probably over the line. I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't go comparing the guy to Nazis. Seriously, if you go back and listen to his biggest hit, Ice Ice Baby, you will be shocked at how bad the Ice Man's rhymes were. Indeed it was. His style was a toxic disaster. Play that funky music's rhymes are not as stupid, but Ice Ice Baby is still probably the better song because it at least still has that bass line. His follow-up also sampled a song with a great bass line, but somehow he decided it should be barely audible. All the better to keep his focus on his sneering, nasally voice. Check it out, cause ice is rhyming. Yeah, like a preschooler. Not rapping, just rhyming. Go ice, everybody is saying to the funky beat that's playing. I realized it was the early 90s and rap was a little less complex than it is now, but even so, Vanilla Ice's flow was pathetically awful. Yo, take it from the Ice Man, lyrical poet with a master plan. How it is in showbiz. A white rapper with some street knowledge. Amazing, not even remotely on the beat. I've heard smoother rhymes from 80s cartoon characters. Friend, fine, look behind. You go wrong way, you fool, I say. 
and it's tragic because the original Play That Funky Music is indeed one of my favorite songs. I guess that's a lesson. Even when white people don't ruin black music, white people will still ruin it.